Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved a lot through the years, so much so it seems intimidating to returning players or people trying out this game for the first time. When I returned to this game in 2021, I was fortunate enough to have kept all my cards and had enough to make a deck. Not a good deck, but a deck nonetheless. But I wanted to see what the game would be like if I started from scratch, with a monster a Yu-Gi boomer like me would probably get behind. I'm starting over with my favorite card of all time to try to crawl my way to competitive success while also limiting myself to trades and cards I pull from packs. So I'm officially starting from scratch. Guys, I'm telling you, it's going to be completely worth it. I found a Cheeto that's in the exact shape of an orange minion. I love a good food anomaly. Me too. The last food anomaly I was a part of was when my dad came home with the milk. It's about as empty as your head in here. They took everything! No, not everything. Last week was Emiko's case tournament, and though we didn't play, so we were able to get a good feel for what the deck can do now that it's gotten more consistent. There are still a few cards we need, so let's get some packs open. The next opening is here, and it is the Yu-Gi-Oh! 25th Quarter Century 10. Now, a little bit of click lore as to why I'm opening this instead of like a competent set, and uh, that is because I wanted to open Photon Hypernova to try to get a catch here, Telemans, but nobody has it. I called so many stores. I went to so many Walmarts and Targets. I found one store that has it, and it is 80 miles away. I'm gonna agree with you guys. I'm not driving 80 miles to pull, get six packs for a card that we might not even pull. So, I figured instead of Kessiro Tournaments, we're gonna go for the Fenrir. Fenrir is in this set. Fenrir is an all right card to get. I think Kessiro would work with us better because it does get the added benefit of getting uh, support from Telemans, which we already have some for, but it's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We also get QCRs out of this, so who knows? Maybe we might get some good trade bait. So the QCR that we get out of here is, oh, damn, Dark Magician QCR. Oh, it's the Yugi art too, the anime art. I really like that. I really like how this art looks. It's, it's good trade bait. It is good trade bait. But I love how this art looks. If we ever run, if we ever decide to run Dragoon in this, we're using this one. Alright, and in the tins, we get three Mega Packs. Let's hope that Fenrir is in one of these. So, let's crack this bad boy open. And we have Thunder Discharge. Wallow, F Wallow Founder, Thumbs of Wallow Thunder, Therion Cross, oh I see something shiny, Cross Keeper, Libromancer Prevented, Credit Plant Boficula, good fusion, S uh, Sunlit Sentinel, Therion Duke, wait what, is that the, huh the foil is weird on this, it was on the edge, I thought we had a QCR, we got Therion Duke, Time Thief Power Reserve, Immortal Dragon. Our secret is Blazing Cartesia the Virtuous. Dog, if we were running branded. <laughs> if only we were running branded. Fun reads in the Advent Adventure. Dynamorphia Shell. Credit Plant, Scientist. Libermancer, Rebel King. Gendig, and Chukru's Ledger Book. Not gonna lie. Pulling the, uh, the, uh, the... Cartesia going to be kind of big for us on this. Not even going to front with you. And if we want to, we can also run pendulums to help get uh, special summon monsters from our hand easier. We could, well, we couldn't. We could special summon Cipher using pendulums, but he would go to the graveyard during the end phase, which might help us. I don't know. Either way, second pack, and we pull the Fenrir. Can we pull the Fenrir? Let's see here, we have X Exclusion, Founder again, Melfi Wally, Bitbliss, Bertapant Bliss, Libromancer Magic Girl, Fair Welcome Labyrinth, oh, we skipped one, Branded Beast, Fire Opal Head, next we have Runic Freezing Curses, then we have the Agent of Destruction Venus, nice looking card. We, then we have World Sea Dragons Lantis is our first secret rare, and our next secret rare, Exo Sister Elise. 
Uh huh. And then we have a bunch more comments. Dope. All right, last mega pack. Can we do it? Can we pull the Fenrir? If we can pull Fenrir, I will call this a success. If we can pull the Fenrir, I will call this a success. We have Underworld Ritual uh, Prediction, Stars Align Across the Milky Way, Therion Cross, Predaclan Biblisp, Amazonist Secret Arts, Dragunity Senatus, First Rare is Sunlit Sentinel, Naturia Camellia, Yoshiro of the Aqua, Runic Golden Droplet, First secret rare is Black Ring Sudri the Phantom Glimmer. Next secret rare is DDD Divisor King Daos Machinex. Huh. <laughs> He's two level 10 fiend monsters. Well, damn. And then everything else is just, you know, the standard commons for the set. I don't think we got, other than the Cartesia, I don't think we got anything crazy out of this. And even then, I think Cartesia has gone down specifically because of this set. But we do have some trade bait here, so uh, let's see what we can't get. The cards we still need are kind of all over the place. Some from Photon Hypernova and others from Darkwing Blast. Packs that are so old, no store carries them anymore. However, after the case tourney, there were a lot of cards that were up for grabs, so we can try and get some good trades before the next local. So Vsauce and Sar for the Platinum Baron? Oh, Works for me. I need this, and I need this. Alright, so the Samsara for the Lynx, and then the Deep Barrier? Yeah, Deep Barrier. That works for me. All right, thank you, thank you, buddy. We weren't able to get a lot of trades, but these were trades that needed to happen. Pulling Vsauce Starfrost is huge, and will go a long way to getting our deck where it needs to be. So let's put our deck together and just see what we can't make. All right, another week, another crappy deck list. So we did manage to get a few trades going off before we went into locals this week, but the deck is still missing a few key components to making it really, really good. But we are one step closer. Starting off, obviously, we have our God Engine. We have our three copies of Suffer the Sky Dragon, our single reactor slime to get out our Metal Reflect slime, and of course, our revived Sky God. So, Slifer, again, I, by the end of the build, it's going to be more utility than anything. So we are running three of him because he's obviously the end goal. Reactor Slime is obviously to get Metal Reflex Slime out, so that we have a level 10 Aqua Monster to get our Egyptian God Slime. And Revive Sky God, honestly, we want this in the grave. We want this to be milled more than anything. If not this, then we want Slifer to be milled and this face down to get Slifer out and to draw it in six. Now this will be on our opponent's turn unless we think we can survive our opponent's turn and we can actually activate it during our turn. And the reason it's mostly going to be on our opponent's turn, one, obviously it's a trap card, but two, if our opponent starts his turn, we can activate this card. Yes, we give our opponent plus six, or we give him plus one if he's already got a full hand. We activate this, then we get Cypher on board, 6,000, 6,000, we'll put him in defense position just to be on the safer side. And anytime our opponent summons a monster, it loses 2,000. So any normal summon starters, they're immediately going to get popped and or drop to zero and then pop. So I think that's going to be really good for Slifer to be on board. And then for our Danger Engine, we are running two Nessie. We are running one Bigfoot and one Jackalope. I would like to trade out the Bigfoot for a Mothman eventually, but we are running with what we got. And obviously these are cards that are helping us get cards that we want in our hand to the graveyard to see Zizu uh, core package or even like we said earlier Slifer in the grave or even revive Sky God in the grave so that way we can activate them plus we just get bodies on field so I really like the danger package in this build. Next up is obviously our Ishizu package these cards are meant to get our cards milled and then shuffled back into the deck I still want the trap card the uh, I always forget the name I always want to call it spirit breaker but that's not it that's the other one I want the trap card because if we can get the trap card engraved, then we get bonus effects from these cards. But I think would help us a lot more in the long run. But obviously, Caesar package is here so that way we can get cards that we want milled in the grave, milled in the grave. Next, we have our tier limb package with Shiren, Merle, and Havnus. We're running double Suliac and double King of the Swamp. King of the Swamp is to act as any stand in for the fusions we can do from the grave. 
Suliac has really good graveyard effects, and also it's just like if we pop a Tyromancer on our side of the field, it pops a card on our opponent's side of the field. And then these guys are just here as, you know, our mill fusion or to get cards from Deck in the Grave with their own mill effects on the field. I think that they have the potential to be really good with this deck. If we can get Kalkalos, we are Kaleido Heart, sorry. We need Kaleido Heart. We need that card. And on to uh, the non engine monsters, we have Vsauce Samsara. Samsara, I think, is going to be a pretty good tuner in the deck. That's a level 4. Uh, we can get a level 6 out, we can get Baron, uh, or even just like, you know, we have Ashes in here, so any of our, dan any of our dangers plus our Ash is going to be good. Samsara can also help us get out Ancient Fairy Dragon. If we can ever get the field spells we need, that would be great. But until then, Samsara is just like a good utility monster. It's going to be a good tuner for us to get out in the field really easily. And once we get our Kashira stuff, it will be actually kind of nutty. Alright, moving on to our hand traps. We are running one copy of Call by the Grave, two copies of Super Poly, three copies of Enemy Controller, two copies of Forbidden Droplet, three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, and finally one copy of Herald of Orange Light. We want as much interruption as possible in our with our deck being the state that it's currently in. So Herald of Orange Life, activate a monster, bonus activates a monster effect, pitch this, send this card to the graveyard, no you don't. Ash Blossom, you know what Ash Blossom does, you know it, you hate it, you also love it at the same time. Forbidden Droplet, one of them used to be one of the most sought after hand traps and uh, quick play spells ever, and now it's pennies, which I love, by the way, I'm not saying that condescendingly, I love it, especially for this challenge. Vision Jump is going to be great. Enemy Controller, simply just a, you have a big body, now your big body is in defense position. Hopefully it is, it's not a Link monster. Or we can, if you have a monster on our side of the field, we can tribute it, and then tribute that monster, assuming it's affected. Super Poly, again, you know, you know it, you love to use it, but you hate it against you. Super Poly is one of those cards that are just insanely broken. And uh, a lot of people want this card banned, and though I don't want to see it banned, I can understand why it would be banned. And then finally, called by whenever we get Ash. This call by is going to come in clutch for us. Moving on to our non-engine spells, we don't have that many of them. We have a Foolish Burial, just to get cards we want in the grave into the grave. Palmerization, just in case we have the cards in our hand that we need. We're also going to be using this for whenever we decide to get our Sphinx card, or our Guardian Chimera. That, that's going to come in clutch. One Monster Reborn, because you need Monster Reborn for Revive Sky God, and Monster Reborn is just a good card. And two copies of Lightning Storm for Back Row Hate. I mean, it's self-explanatory with why we have these cards, really. Alright, moving on to the extra deck, starting with the Fusion Monsters, we have one copy of Mud Dragon, one Dracus Topelio, Venom Fusion, Kilomens Rukalos, and three copies of Egyptian God Slime. Not a lot has changed with the extra deck, if anything has changed with the extra deck. A lot of the changes that we got were main monsters. So you're going to see a lot of reoccurring cards in this section. I'm not going to go over why we're running them. If you want to know why we're running them, I suggest watching episode 3, because that's pretty much when we added everything. Moving on to the Synchros, still running the one Ancient Fairy Dragon as a Meat Shield right now, and the one Baron de Fleur. As you know, Omnigate, as you would. Eggsies, we are running a Time Thief Redoer to be annoying, and an Abyss Dweller to also be annoying. And moving on to the links, we are running a Nightmare Unicorn, Cerberus, Griffin, and a single Dark, the Dark Charmer. Uh, obviously, Dark is so that way we can scoop up our opponent's Dark type monster. It's going to be really good if we're running a Tier Mirror Match or Abyss Deals. And then the Nightmares are just good in general, that's why you run them. And finally, the side deck. In the side deck, we are running three copies of Godarla, because Kaiju get rid of any monster you want. One Harpy's Feather Duster. We are running two copies of Infinite Impermanence. One copy of Change of Harp. We are running our third Super Poly in the side deck. We are running three copies of Book of Moon. Three copies of Evenly Matched and a single Kierleman's Heartbeat. Again, I went over this in more detail back in episode 3 because not a lot has changed to the side deck either. So if you want to get in better detail of why we have this in our side, uh, be sure to watch episode 3. Our deck is coming along very nicely, and I'm sure there's nothing in my future from this recording that will change that. Definitely not. Nope, nothing at all. But with our new deck in hand, it's time to head to local. <laughs>
Our feature match today is against Eldritch. Eldritch is a pretty good rogue deck that you still see pop up from time to time, so I was actually happy to face it and see where we stand against it. So without further ado, it's time to duel. We screw up here. Uh, stand by your main. Yeah. Normal summon Merle. Merle effect of normal summon in the middle top three. Yeah. So one, two. Damn. Uh, let's see. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Very normal sandwich. Now I'm just gonna go to the back. I never. I will. It's not enough. Monster reborn. Yeah. Reborn, danger, Nessie, and defense position. I will set, set, from there, oh damn, I will link to, go into, let's see that, okay, go into my Cerberus. And there I will simply pass. Yep. 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 Uh, target to this. We will call some completion. Yep. Effect search. Yep. Oops. I'll uh, attempt to move the battle. Yep. Attempt for 15. 1500. Alrighty. Uh, yep. Set four and then I'll pass two. Draw for turn. Set, set, pass turn. Um, getting to the phase, I'm going to activate. Uh, yep. Sanguine, it'll uh, special summon Elwood from the deck. Okay. Yep. Uh, stand by. Main phase. Yep. <coughs> Let's see gravy. Okay. Yep. Uh, I will enemy controller switching Eldritch defense. Um, I want to see it. So 15. 18. You lose three. <laughs> Um, 
to yep. supply someone. Yep. Uh, so phase, I'll activate Vanish, you can set a Golden Land Stellar Trap. Okay. Do you know what the gold lanes do? Uh, vaguely. So this one, uh, if I, it, it only matters if I control Eldritch, but basically they're monster traps. Yeah. Um, and if I control Eldritch, this one summons and banishes non-target, banishes a card from uh, from the grave. Okay. And then the other one from Kisador, he no target, uh, no target blocks. Okay. Face up card. Okay. And then I will pass to you. Draw. Yep. Stand by in the main. Uh, I will play Super Poly, discarding for cost. That's a thing. I will be choosing. Let's see if this needs. Is that? No, okay, I'll be choosing Eldritch and Glacia. For Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Mm -hmm. uh, can I see your grave real quick? Okay. Okay. Uh, and I can't do anything from there. So I will put Medora in attack position. Okay. Attempt to enter battle. Um, I will... Yeah, that's good. Uh, fifteen direct. Fifteen. I will. Go ahead and dogmatic for punishment. I will uh, target. Card face up card you control, send one monster equal or higher attack from your extra to graveyard. You destroy the monster. Okay. So I will send. Send Entis. So this one will be destroyed on your resolution. Um, we will go Entis effect to uh, target and destroy. Okay. Uh, I will go to main two. The door is affecting graves. Banish for cost to shuffle three cards from the graveyard into the deck. Targets? targets will be my Murley, my Droplet, and my. I will do this. My Super Poly. All good to go? Yeah. Okay. Total tap. And we will end there. Uh, same by me? Yep. I will activate a in hand, pitch him in a solar trap to uh, target and send to grave. Send to grave. Uh, so that, that can't activate. Uh, yeah, I will activate. So we have to add a tier list and deck hand. Yes. And I will be adding. Where you is? My Shiren. And gray. Okay. We'll send for cost. Uh, add it to hand and then special summon. Yep. Uh, he, when he's done by that effect, he gains a thousand. So he's at thirty-five uh, until the end of your turn. Okay. And then he uh, can't be destroyed by battle of card effects. Okay. Uh, so I will clear battle on that. Okay. And uh, send for thirty-five. All right. Send down to three k. Main two, yep. set one. I will pass to you. Draw for turn. First, I will normal summon reactor slime. My guy. Okay. Uh, I will use his effect to special summon two slime tokens. I will attempt to skill drain. Okay. Okay, so skill drain. He's definitely rid of that. What can I do? Skill drain. 
I got two warnings. It's like I can't really go for it. Um, I can. I was supposed to summon Siren from my hand. So you have to pitch. Uh, oh, I do have to pitch. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um. Oh, damn. There's nothing in my grave. <clears throat> I will simply have to pass there. <coughs> In the end phase, I will activate this Spanish to set an elixir from deck. Yep. Um, I'll go ahead and change the sanguine to a special from deck. Okay. Yep. Somebody. Yep. Yep. So that's two K. That's that's not two thousand. Yep. Uh, I said well. I was going to say I should have done Shiren, then Reactive Slime, but yeah. Reactive Slime being Grave. Slime would be engraved. Uh, yeah, then Skill Drain, and then I'm just kind of... Well, you couldn't have yeah, like, Skill Drain. Yeah. No, I couldn't. Let's see. Match. Match. Oh, and... Uh, I think it's going to be what we want. I will go second. Drop a turn. Yep. I'm about to do what the kids call a pro gamer move. Pro gamer. Harpy's Feather Duster. That is something. Yep. Next, we will no more summon Merley. Merley effect or normal summon mill three. One, two, three. Two leg effect to add. To hand. Now I have a three to go off. So uh, let's see. We will do. We'll do Shiren. Mm -hmm. 
red coat up. We will special summon Siren with its own effect. Summon, load top three. One, two, three. Doesn't help us. And a monster. Oh, and a pitch monster. Uh, we will do Kelbeck. Uh, Kelbeck's effect. Oh, and, and yep, I just want to make sure I got the number right. One, two, and three, four, and five. Keldo. That's another shuffle. It's another shuffle. We will banish Keldo to shuffle back three. We will shuffle back our. We'll do Suliak, we will do Kalbeck, and we will do Reborn. And we will do Dora, do the same thing. Shuffle back our Droplet, shuffle back our Feather Duster, and shuffle back our Lightning Storm. Here you are. Let's see, we have already normal summoned for the turn. So what can't we screw up here? Uh, we will... Link 2. Go into Dark. Dark effect to take a Dark Monster from your graveyard. And we will. Can't do anything because they were linked, right? Right, yeah. That's yeah. That's a downside. Okay. From there, we will set one. Enter battle. 25. That would be. What, 3650? Yep. So, 3650. And from there, we will simply pass turn. So, is that set? Yes, it's set. Uh, in phase, yep. I will activate both of these. Okay. To set uh, Elixir. Yep. Is this happening during in phase? Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, this one, this one specifically, you can banish anytime. Okay. These have to activate during the end phase. Okay. Gotcha. Doctor. Yep. Uh, standby. Yep. Special summon the Mm-hmm. Yep. To special floor relief. Yep. Special. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was uh, it was uh, attempt to move back. Yep. Uh, attempt to swing. That's a twi so you're crashing. No. So this effect is when your dogmatic monster declares an attack, you can make all dogmatic monsters you currently control gain 500 attack. Okay. So because so, of the thing. Okay, so it's batting over. Yep. So I lose five. Uh, storm battle. I'll the same. Okay. Uh, I'll get the swing. 
1850, which is math, 650, so that's 7,869, 6850. Yep. I'll set one, <coughs> and I will send it to Castle. Draw for turn. Is that one pass turn? Uh, yep. 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 I will attempt any battle. Yep. Uh, this is a 2000. 21 defense. Uh, I'm sorry, no, this is going to activate again. So it picks up right now. Oh, does it? Yeah. Swing for 25. 25. Swing for 35. For 35, so that's five, six thousand total, so I'm at 850. And then I'll get the summon to 1800. Yep. Yep. Good match. Good game. I know that it doesn't seem like progress, but trust me, there is. On top of learning how Tira works, I'm able to enter on boards much better than I normally could. Are those boards and testing and never happen in tourneys? Maybe, but that's no reason to give up. In the next episode, we make some big trades that might not amount to much. Take bars, little man.